Hey, what's up, y'all? Jake with Couch here. I'm about to head out to the Who's Number One in Dallas, Texas. I can't beat it, you know, riding in luxury, living the life out here uh, in the Midwest. So, um, see you guys in Dallas. I'm cutting weight. I'm on weight. He hands me a chip. He hands me a chip. I eat it. Of course. Then he tells me I can't have it anymore. It's a chip. It doesn't weigh anything. What is he talking about? Bro, can I have another chip? Give me another chip, man. make it. It was good while it lasted. About to head into East St. Louis. Uh, our flights actually just got canceled. He's back there. <laughs> Trying to rebook him. Looking like a mob done. Uh, or get us a car to drive down there. You know, uh, we'll get down there anyway we can. If we have to saddle up a horse and ride it, we'll get down there. It might take us a little longer than the flight, but we'll do it. So. Trying to get the travel situation figured out now. This train stuff ain't too bad, you know. These tracks are pretty smooth. The seats are a little, uh, a little firm, a little firm compared to a cushion, but that's all right. That don't bother us. Bother me none. So, uh, train ride's going good. Hammer out. <laughs> what's up, guys? Hammer here. Heath, you want to tell them what's going on? Heath. <laughs> Hammer. <laughs> so uh, it's like it's about midnight. Uh, we've been waiting for about seven hours. We think our plane finally got here. Uh, this is the third airline we switched to. So if this one doesn't work out, we're gonna we're gonna grab a car and just drive to Dallas. It's only about 13 hours, I think. So uh, we'll know shortly if we're on the plane. Guys, just got into Dallas. It's about 4 a.m. here. We're about 30 minutes away from the from the hotel. Airport's completely empty. It's whatever though. Gonna get down there, check my weight, cut a few more pounds, and weigh in in about four hours. So I am uh, much excited. I am very much excited. What is? All right. So I actually got us dropped off at the wrong hotel. Um, we're at the Resident Inn. Still ain't shit compared to Daniel Boone or Combs Motel, but it's all right. It's the, Daniel Boone. the Daniel Boone, the Daniel Boone, I stayed in that hotel. Daniel uh, Boone Inn, Hazard? No, this is the Daniel Boone Motel, and then you got the Combs Motel. I stayed in the Daniel Boone when I was a kid, where our trailer got burnt down by my crackhead neighbor for a month. <laughs> I, ate, I ate Fruit Loops out of plastic bowls. It was the best time of my life, I'm gonna be real honest. It was good? It was good. There it is. There's the money. There's the money. The resident inn, baby. So the star, that's the star in front of us. Okay, the star is in front of us. Let me get this bitch around real quick. The star is right in front of our hotel. As you can see, it's like where all the Cowboys players practice, train. Uh, tons of NBA players over there. Get us a quick run through. Let's just go. What's up, guys? Just woke up. He's still asleep. Uh, probably go check my way right now. Can get dressed and head over there real soon. See you guys over there. Hammer out. Might got caught in there. Just heading to the. Uh, oh, 
Just heading to the venue now, about to go do the official weigh-ins and the press conference. Hopefully J-Rod brings me some gummy worms, that'd be nice. A little bit of sugar after a weigh-in. Seems, I feel like that'd probably be the most nutrition you could get, right? Pack a trolley? No? You guys let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments how you think Mountain Dew would pair with trolley as well. I'm curious as to what the people think, because that's what really matters, what the people think. <laughs> See you guys, hammer out. Just making my way over to the way it's now. Some of these cars I've never seen before in my entire life. I have to ask these all the time, what the fuck is that? What, what is that car? The countries are made in all kinds, all types of stuff. So, I'm about to head over there now. Hey guys, just finished up the interview part and now I'm able to enjoy, thanks to Flow Grappling and Sports Academy, I'm able to enjoy these nice um, Normatex leg compression stuff that make your legs feel pristine after. So when you're cutting weight and all that good stuff, it, it kind of helps, you know, <laughs> recover a little bit. So just getting some recovery in now, going to do the official weigh in in about hour and a half two hours after this gets done i'm going to go up there to the sports massage place and get get a little little tissue work done you know what i'm saying all that for all them fried bologna sandwiches makes my traps tight i don't know must be something with the blood pressure or the sodium who knows i'm not a doctor uh yeah just chilling now relaxing a little bit kick, kicking back enjoying it you know so see you guys up there Just got the IV done. Got some hydration. That's why your boy's glowing. Got that, got that thing on me. You know, keep those things on me. Nah, these are gonna be good though tonight. And then, now I'm gonna settle down a little bit, you know. Gotta settle down, get my mind right, get my body right. After these cookies though, me and Heath are gonna tear these bad boys up, son. I can't wait. See y'all in a bit. Hey guys, what's semen in it but that's okay it's a it's a great place to eat we ate there last time we were here and it was super super good so uh just getting just getting some uh foot foot cruising in with the with the folks there's cp wait hold on there's cp simone michael sears and obviously heath the main man the don aka heath gambino this is uh Every time I come here, man, I just feel feel blessed to be be able to see something like this. You know, coming from coming from a single wide trailer that's falling over the mountain, you have to worry about your your ceiling coming down or your light fixture falling on your head while you're asleep. So getting to see something like this is pretty special. Hammer out. For those of you at home that don't get to see the outside of the venue, this is what this beautiful, beautiful place looks like, man. Look at that. That's unreal. Unreal how gorgeous this place is, man. You got, you got the end zone here. Everything's a touchdown, baby. <laughs> I know, but like... Yeah. She don't work for you. I just ask her a favor. A lot of favors. Hey, you better make this. We gotta keep them off the line. If you make this, you go back to the end. 
What if you just get over? Check or you get another one? I'm going to hit this. You can make one free throw and then you win. And it's over. And the nightmare of losing to me comes to an end. Close his eyes. <laughs> the camera didn't catch. Nah. I got it. The camera did you No. Did you do a post match interview? Did you see he closed his eyes? What'd you do out there? Tell me. I tell basically me embarrassed did. Michael Sears and Christian Powell <laughs> in a game of 21. You technically beat me by it's, it's the, easy work. the fewest amount of points possible. Also, Christian actually has the right shoes. The these right are, kind of these shoes. These are casual sneakers. This is not a casual encounter. All right, turn this off. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you have passed that, I don't. What's up, guys? Just getting some breakfast. Morning of the event. My main girl, Big Sizzle. Tell them. Sizzle. Big Sizzle. Hey. Oh, oh. Event day. Event day. Shit. Event day. The main man back there making calls like always. <laughs> About to get some grub. Get my eat on. Get some coffee. Get right for the. Get right for the event tonight. See you on a bit. Dallas Cowboys basically built a little city in Frisco, te Texas to essentially commemorate the Cowboys. So the motherfucker, he built all this. Imagine. Imagine that. I think it looks better in the daytime, I'll be real honest with y'all. Man. They practice right there. Right there where they practice. My name's going to be on screen like that one day. Just finished breakfast. We're here at the, let's see, what's this thing called? Dallas Cowboys Ring of Honor Walk. That's what this thing's called right here. So it says right there. You know hillbillies can't read that well. Check this shit out, man. This is fucking raw. You got all these, all these legends up here. Michael Irvin. They got a Michael Irvin uh, memorial over here. It's basically his number. They got all kinds of shit like that, man. They got their numbers, they got like helmets and shit. But look at this. This is ridiculous. Shit, I'm gonna stop doing jiu-jitsu, try to get a contract with the Cowboys looking at all this. I like I'd like my number out here. I'm number one. <laughs> number one. I just watched Borat last night, so I'm kinda into that right now. What is this one? The Hail Mary. 50 yard reception. It's perfect. Simone, you gonna play for the I'm Cowboys? Hell yeah, brother. Touchdown what? every day. What? Okay, right? they, they only play once a week. Touchdown every week, brother. Do you know what day they play on? Monday night football, Saturday night football, Sunday night football, one of those. Who's this, guys? That's Irvin. That's that boy, Irvin. Yes, brother. Look at that, 88. That's right. That's how old Simone is. <laughs> no. I think that's 92, brother. It is? I don't know. Irvin's number is 88 too. I be getting confused. They got hella, they got about 70 people on their, a roster every year. I get confused sometimes. Just getting back to the hotel now. Look at that. Oh shit, what is that? Oh damn, they got the highest number I can count to on here. That's nice. Took a lot of them. Let's see what we got here. Little welcome bag. Obviously, don't know how to untie this. Oh my goodness. Is this a complete? I'm about to just rip this in half. Alright, here we go. Let's see what we got. Ooh, a little GPS, so pin out. Alright. Wouldn't need needed that. Sweethearts. Boom. <laughs> hey, come on now. 
you ain't eating made good soft baked mini cookies, chocolate chip. You just can't beat that, can you? Look at that. A little bit of confetti in there for the party after. Full of grappling, doing it right, baby. Just headed to the venue now. On You guys can't really make it out there, but it's Hall of Fame Boulevard. Walking to the, the star, getting ready to start the event. Starts at 8, it's about 7.30 now. Showing up. Gonna try to show out tonight. Hammer out. Free Steve Hodgett is ready to ready? get things underway. Ready? Bye! Middleweight match, 185 pounds. In the white is Jacob Rodriguez representing B team. In the black and red is Jacob Couch, AKA Hillbilly Haller. One of the best nicknames in all of grappling. Yeah, without question. And in the past, we would have said this is a classic match between top player and leg locker and Jacob Couch being the strong leg locker here, but he's definitely been putting work on the feet and his top game as well as he eyes ADCC as the ultimate prize. But he goes back to his favorite home base here. And Jay Ruff, for his part, loves the body lock passing and wants to end up on the back. So, you know, I feel that uh, this is one of those matches that you would definitely say it's a style versus style because, yes, of course, Jacob Couch can wrestle. Yes, of course, he works his top game just like everybody else does in jiu-jitsu. But his favorite attacks, the attacks that he, he prefers to compete, uh, to, to attack from, prefers to work from, he's really all about that that leg lock game he's had some of his most significant victories have come by leg lock although here on who's number one he has also won by arm lock and upper body attack against hunter colvin last year october of 2021 from a very similar position to what we see now very good shoulder crunch kind of going high the legs but j-rod jacob rodriguez as he better known j-rod as do many of the B team guys. Man, they're so good at this body lock passing style. They just shut that down. They make guard work miserable, right? With the hands clasped beneath the back and spine of Jacob Couch. It really makes things kind of uncomfortable. We see Jacob thinking a little bit about the guillotine there. But another thing about J-Rod that is true is that you nearly have to put him all the way unconscious. He will not tap to anything. We've seen that many times over. But he's getting a little comfortable here. And Jacob starts looking at that neck a little more closely. I think... Not quite deep enough, but again, Jacob showing his intentions early here as he keeps uh, Rodriguez stuck in that powerful close guard. And I think it's actually smart strategy from Couch to not give Rodriguez space. One thing that Rodriguez has done is he came into the grappling game just, I think, less than two years ago, really, in terms of, like, full-time grappling experience. And uh, much like his brother had a, uh, a wrestling background, but not to any particular high level. You know, both of them, they ni neither of them wrestled in college, really. They're just high school wrestlers. But they were able to take that energy and that work rate and apply it in the grappling scene so well. And, well, we've seen it from J-Rod, that you give him space and he, he has that youthful energy, explosiveness, coupled with that kind of those wrestling instincts. In the grappling arena, he is overwhelming at times. And... Uh, I think Couch is being very smart in tying him up and trying not to give him any space because if he does, it could be a bad day. Jacob Rodriguez has had a total of eight matches on the Who's Number One mats. J-Rod, on the other hand, had won a couple of weeks ago, a 15-minute decision loss to Giancarlo Bodoni, and as you mentioned, a possible fight nice. of the year contender and nice. won match closed door match in the early elimination phase of who's next the reality show the series that we had on flow grappling it's good to see these emerging professionals here on the who's number one stage because i think j-rod made such a statement at the adcc trials people are very look at this kimura attack here from couch he's got a decent connection to that arm what do you think chase something here a little hard to say, but the primary battle for Couch has been to separate this by lock pass, and right there nearly got the extension away from the hip to create a, a little more control. But right now, he's really shutting down the offense of, of uh, J Rod. J Rod is unable to really get anything going, and Jacob has to separate those hands, which he's done quite nicely here. 
You can see in the background, you can see that Heath Pedigo, the uh, Pedigo Submission Fighting coach and founder, in the corner of Jacob Couch, in the corner of J-Rod, Nikki Ryan, and oh. Craig Jones. Oh, look at this Kamura attack here. Kamura attack from Couch. Reverse his position now into the mouth. That was a decent crank on that arm. So he swept J-Rod now. He's in the control position, but that submission attack is potentially still active. 100%. J-Rod is certainly not out of danger here. This is a tough spot to be in. With Couch applying all of his weight now. Also applying what looks to be a body triangle. This is this is very tight. Yeah, this is a tough position to get out of because should J-Rod try to hip bump and escape, it could give Couch the space he needs to get that oh, arm lock. Oh. We may see a submission here. He had full extension on that arm right here. This is a very perilous position for, for Jacob Rodriguez. Of course, the judges favor no, no doubt at all that Jacob Couch gets the judge's favor this sweep into the mount of this active submission attack here this is deep water for j-rod calmly defending here but we saw there was a moment when that arm got straightened out there's a lot going on here couch could get the rotation on the shoulder he could get the straight arm lock attack against the elbow joint it's a powerful attack position Jacob's got a lot of weapons here, right? And he's being very patient. He knows he's in the driver's seat, and he may not get another shot quite like this. So it makes sense that he's taking the time to establish the control Everything and work another attack nice. short. We hear the crowd applauding because Jacob Rodriguez has managed to escape the submission attack and is now being pinned. Couch has the crossface and underhook control. And you can see a great view here of that upper body pin riding the torso. It's mount position. And I'm wondering, Chase, the fact that Couch has a total of eight matches under who's, one, who's number one rules, I'm wondering whether that experience was a factor going into this match here because he just looks so calm. Oh, well, he's certainly employing a tactic we saw in one of his most recent matches at WNO, which was against Gordon Ryan, which saw couch on the reverse position we're looking at right now and that was a lot of pressure on top and all revolved around uh, separating the elbow from the hips or sides there for Jacob Rodriguez position on bottom it's a difficult position to, to maintain a solid defense and nice. Jacob has no problem excuse me Jacob couch has no problem just pouring the pressure on here making things miserable because he's felt that very same sensation himself yeah, Gordon Ryan really redefined what was possible in submission grappling with the use of the mount position it was a kind of a position that fell out of favor in the grappling scene, I would say. You know, the, uh, certainly was a favorite of one of the greatest of all time, Roger Gracie. He used it in both gi and no gi, and it wasn't really until Gordon Ryan started utilizing it again this year that people were like, oh, wow, yeah, you can do a lot from the mount. I think Jacob Couch has maybe taken some inspiration from that, including his match against Gordon Ryan here in Frisco, Texas in March of this year. He felt firsthand just how effective that mount position could be. A very different looking mount to that, of course, of Gordon Ryan. But you can see that he's trying to get the separation of the elbow away from the upper body. He's got the underhook with his right arm. And he's trying to bring his legs higher up the torso and underneath the armpits. And that separation, really, that's where the submission going to ta attacks are going to start from, right, Chase? Yeah, without question. Plus, it just makes breathing more difficult on bottom. We saw Gordon attempt to smother his opponents in the past. Uh, John Carlo, his teammate, was able to pull that off in another competition very recently. So th there's an ongoing war here, basically, for, for J-Rod on bottom. He's trying to survive and maintain a cool head as he gets uh, actual defense in as well. I think that Couch will have seen that match, J-Rod versus Giancarlo, from a couple of weeks ago. And probably learned a lot from that in that number one Jacob Rodriguez is incredibly difficult to submit he was in some dead to rights rear naked chokes against Giancarlo Bodoni and he was able to find his way out time and time again now this is good work from couch he's going high could be in the beginning stages of an arm triangle katakatami style choke but Jacob Couch will have watched that match, I'm sure, and learned a lot, is that, number one, J-Rod is really, 
really resilient under pressure. Number two, that if you give him the slightest opportunity to escape, he can turn the tables very quickly. I remember there was a moment in that earlier match that J-Rod, man, he just slipped out and he was straight on Giancarlo's back. And it was like, it's like deja vu, we've seen the same thing, but from the other side, and I'm sure Couch will want to avoid that. Oh, now we see him going for the arm triangle. He's managed to get that elbow very, very high now. Yeah, this is looking better and better for Couch here on top. The choke may be starting to sink in here as Couch starts to drop his hips, drop the pressure. Jacob doing his best to do the telephone defense here, but again, that may be tight, maybe on. And what a redemption arc for Jacob Couch, right? His last WNO appearance did not go his way, and he took a, some serious criticism online for that, and he came back and is really looking incredible right now. Jacob Couch is looking definitely for something specific, and we're going to get our second judge's favor. Favor yeah, no surprise at all after such a dominant period in the mount. A full five minutes after that Kimura sweep from the guard into this mount position. And again now, this arm triangle choke. Okay, now I see that Couch dropped his head there. He's got his ear, his left ear, against the tricep of Jacob Rodriguez. He's looking to punch that left arm deeper to try and cut off the carotid artery on the side of the neck and to use his head and to push the upper arm into the other side of J-Rod's neck. That's, that's really where the pressure for this choke comes from. You can see the effects of the pressure on the face of J-Rod, but it's not quite there yet, Chase. And this shows the poise of Jacob Couch. Some, some competitors would have maybe abandoned this attack and tried to switch things up and exactly. get a little frustrated that they can't get yeah, the immediate yeah. finish. But he is working and adjusting. And J-Rod, meanwhile, is just really going through it right now on bottom. This is not where he wants to be. Now, we've speculated that one of the reasons that J-Rod's submission defense is so good is because he trains daily Almost with there. the likes of Craig Jones, Nicky Ryan, Ethan Cralenston, Damian Anson, and of course his big brother Nick Rodriguez, who's next champion, Isaac Michelle, all the killers that they've got there at the B team in Austin, Texas. And training with those guys, you're definitely going to work on your submission defense. So I feel that Rod here, J-Rod is able to survive, but that's just not there enough. You go, he needs there. to he needs to escape. He's got just over three minutes. He needs to escape. Otherwise, it's very clear which way this match is going to go. Well, I think j Rod's moving with as much urgency as he can without giving anything away. Uh, right now, he's not in a spot where you want to explode and be a little reckless with your actions. And Jacob Couch is using that to his advantage right now. This is complete control, complete domination from top. And uh, again, looking to make the adjustments required to get the finish. He's got just less than three minutes left and has to be uh, very pleased with how it's going. Very, very tight control there from Couch. Minutes, hasn't Jay. really lost an inch throughout the last seven minutes or more. J-Rod is very calmly defending from bottom. Seems to be really struggling. But now that you can see there's a bit more urgency. There's a oh, now he bridge. almost feeds the arm all the way across, but J-Rod does well to get it back on the, the correct side of the head to defend this choke. And there's another battle going on at the other end of the body. You can see the feet against feet. You can see that J-Rod is trying to stomp his feet in, and there you see the viewer. You actually, he's trying to get his hooks and to try and sort of uncross those feet yeah, yeah, of J-Rod, and, 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 excuse me, of, of Couch, and to get so his, uh, to make some space that he can hip escape. There's a lot going on in this battle. You might be better off doing that, Jay. There you we go. see Couch now keep turtling, keep move turtling. off to the back because now, finally, J-Rod has been able to get his shoulders off the mat, but actually, no, Couch is putting him back. You're good. His back flat to nice, nice. the mat. And right now, elbow to knee. I thought he may transition with it and go to the back, but... As we saw, it was almost impossible to submit Jacob Rodriguez from the back in that last match. So maybe Couch is like, no, I'm just nice, nice. going to stay here. I feel more comfortable. And there we see Jacob for the first time. Briefly release a look at that attack. And now he's grinding his way right back into it. Matt Couch is going face first into that defense, trying to combat the hand fighting there of, uh, of Jay Rodriguez. And Jay's 
Oh, even going for a little bit of a smother there across the face, hand across the mouth, impede the breathing. And now is on the back, body triangle on. Less than a minute left, 50 seconds here. And J Rod, uh, to his credit, gets out of a very dire situation. His back defense we know is incredible. That's what we saw a lot of in his match with Giancarlo. But still, frying pan into the fire? Frying pan into the fire, there's not a lot of time left. You're right, that Jacob Rodriguez is back defense. Phenomenal in the face of a fellow ADCC trials winner, Giancarlo Bodoni. Will Couch have any success from this position? Can't. Oh, there we go, the hand fighting is really crucial here in this position. They're right on the safety area now, right on the edge of bounds, and they go back into this mount position. Might be safer to put them back into the center of the mat here as they settle down and Couch is on top once again, but the clock will run down, just seconds remaining. Time. Well, we will, but now over to our announcer for the official decision. And after 15 minutes, the judges have made the decision. Your winner, by unanimous decision, representing Pedigo Submission Fighting, the Hillbilly Hammer, Jacob. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys know the beloved Mama, and so I just want to give you a chance to speak on um, her passing and anything that you want to add uh, here tonight with us. <coughs> um, she's uh, the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, one of the very last conversations I had with her before she passed away. Uh, she was sitting in her hospital bed, and she told me, she said, uh, she, she's talking to me about where I want to live. I told her I wanted to live in England. She was like, they don't, she said, she said, uh, they don't got no food over there. I said, ma'am, I'm sure they got plenty of food. But then she said, uh, I was just telling her about my career and how it's going and everything like that. And she said, uh, she said, you really found your calling with this, huh? And this is, uh, this was the last time I seen her before she passed. So I just, ever since she told me that, I've kind of carried it with me, and I thought about it tonight. There's a song uh, by this guy named Tyler Childers who's from the area I'm from in eastern, in eastern Kentucky. It's a song called Follow You to Virgie, and uh, it's about his buddy's grandma passing away when they were in high school, and I listened to it on repeat about five or six times tonight before my match. Um, it kind of helped me more than anything calm down and just appreciate the moment I get to be a part of and uh, all the people around me and the situation I've been blessed with because tomorrow isn't promised. And uh, I'm just more than anything, if you guys see me there, I, I was looking up in the rafters after I got my hand raised. I was looking at her in a figurative way because I know if she got to see this, she would be smiling. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to carry on her spirit and keep smiling. Hey, what's up, guys? Just wrapping up. Came out with the victory tonight. Big fellas going behind me, legends of the sport. Legends of the camera, right here, the young intern. Yo, tell you got them. the sky cam up here. You're too loud. <laughs> Just wrapping it up, it was a blessing to be able to have such a great performance tonight against such a great opponent like J-Rod. Getting to watch a legendary main event now. I'll see you guys next time. Hammer out.